Hello everyone and welcome to this new session in which we'll treat mixed sample data augmentation. Previously we saw how to do data augmentation on a single image like this or this one. And now we'll learn how to create new samples based on a combination or a mixture of different images or different samples from our data set. And more specifically, we'll treat the mix up data augmentation strategy, where we'll pick two samples from the data set. We're going to mix up the samples and then we're going to include the strategy in our TF data pipeline. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss amazing content like this. Up to this point, we've implemented data augmentation strategies which involve modifying input samples like this one. So we could take this input sample, we could do a zoom, we could do a center crop, we could rotate, we could translate and do many other stuff with this in order to augment our already existing data. Now in this section, we'll look at another data augmentation strategy which is known as mix up. Now mix up doesn't only involve just one sample as we had seen previously with mix up. We are going to make use of these two samples instead of just one, mix them up and then produce this output sample. And if you look very carefully here, you'll notice that this image contains this one. You could see it here. You could see it carved out this dog carved out like this. You see it here. And then this other dog right here. So we also have this one, which is also carved out like this. So we could see the mixture of this two to form one input. So we have this output image, which we could define as X prime, which is a mixture or a combination of this image X one and X two. So yeah, let's have X one and X two. But this actually happens to be a weighted addition. That is, we have a certain factor lambda, which is uh, a value between zero and one and drawn from the beta distribution such that we have X prime equal lambda times X one plus one minus lambda times X two. This means if lambda equals 0 0.5, then we'll have 0 0.5 X one plus 0 0.5 X two. Lambda equals 0 0.3. For example, we have 0 0.3 X one plus 0 0.7 X two. So some sort of weighted addition. Now we've created this new input. It's logical that we need to modify the labels because this doesn't belong to either or you cannot really say that this belongs to this class or this class. It actually is a mixture of both classes. So unlike previously where when we do data augmentation on this image, we are going to maintain the label because it still remains this uh, particular class. But when we mix classes up together or images from two different classes together like this, we need to modify the label. And so that said, we have a new label y prime equal lambda, and you guessed that right, y1 plus 1 minus lambda y2. And from here, we could now dive into the code and implement this mix up data augmentation strategy. Recall we said that lambda was to be drawn from a beta distribution but if you come to the documentation we've been using so far where we have this tensorflow.org api docs you wouldn't really find this beta distribution so you're advised to look out in this one year so go to tensorflow.org slash probability instead it's here you would find this distribution so here we have this um, TensorFlow probabilities and then you have TensorFlow distributions. When you click here, you could find many probability distributions, including this beta distribution, which we want to work on now. Now, just right here, you could see the beta distribution. You have the definition and then notice how we have this two parameters, which we must pass. 
So the beta distribution is defined over zero one, this interval zero one, using parameters concentration one, aka alpha, and concentration zero, aka beta. So we have the parameters alpha and beta to pass right here. Now, if you look up in this mix up paper, you would see that the parameters alpha they use like here from this experiment is um, 0 0.2 and then sometimes they use 0 0.42 but most times they tested on 0 0.2 so it's this parameter we'll be using and then getting back here all we need to do now is copy this out so we copy this get back to our code and then we have the mix up down here so here we have this mix up okay mix up the augmentation let's reduce this and then we reduce this part so well, you wouldn't run the cells because we're not going to be making use of this now so here we, we have this mix up let's test out this we run it and we have this error name concentration is not defined anyway we could get back here and then import tensorflow probability so let's import tensorflow probability and then we'll put that as tfp we run that and then get back to our mix up okay so here we have this mix up let's take this off and let's take all this off actually 0 0.2 0 0.2 okay so we got that from the paper that's understood and then we have lambda so here we have lambda if we spell it this way we'll have the keyword the python keyword so let's just keep that simple and just have this lambda spelled although spelled wrongly and now we'll do lambda let's print out lambda lambda dot sample so we take pick out one sample from that beta distribution and we run that and here's what we get so you see if you run this again you would obviously get different of outputs and all this drawn from the beta distribution and in the range zero one so here i'm just going to do this pick out this zero item and then we have this output we could also put this numpy to get it see you have this now so it's, you're not having a tensor but anyway we prefer to use it as a tensor and we'll explain why will it's preferable to work with tensors in the function we're trying to build from here we just simply apply the formula so we'll have the output image which is equal lambda times the image one plus one minus lambda times the image two so that's it for the image we repeat the same process for the labeling then using open cv we'll test this on these two images which we've added here we have this dog and this cat image right here so we have this two we're going to test this on it let's take this off um right here we have we're going to read the images so we have image one we're going to do the reading im read and then we'll do the same for im two so right here we could print out image dot shape and label dot shape all right let's, let's just print out the label so we have that we get in this error um let's get back up and we correct this so this is actually lambda let's modify lambda lambda equal this so let's have that out okay so we have that right we run this again and require broadcastable shapes which happens because we haven't yet resized this because here we have image if we, if we print out the shape of image one and uh, image two before doing this operation you see there are two different shapes so we have to ensure that they are both the same you see they're two different now let's resize this with cv2 resize resize and then we'll specify uh, the shape so let's have here uh, im size im size im size okay we have that done we just copy this out paste out here we have im size and then cv2 resize okay so we've uh, read we've resized and that should be fine now we run that again im size not defined let's have that to be defined here um we actually defined this previously but we haven't run those previous cells since we restarted the notebook so 
that's why it isn't recognizing the im size okay now level one are defined this looks great already uh, for this levels let's say we have level one so here we have level one equal zero and then level two equal one so we have just these two levels okay we run that again and this is what we get you see we have this output image and then we have this final level and which happens to be neither zero nor one from here we could plot this out plt im show and then we pass in the image and normalize this we run that and this is what we get so you see we have a mix up of these two images now that we have succeeded to do this let's make this part of our tensorflow pipeline so we could take all this out now and then define this mix up method we have this level okay we'll take this off okay we, we we're gonna define this method let's call it mix up and the way this method works is we're gonna take in our data so our train data set here we have one and then train data set two so we have this two data sets which contain the same elements but which have been shuffled so that we could have this kind of mix up then we can now make this data sets available which will do the mix up on so let's add some code take this up and then here we have our first train data set we have train data set one which is actually our train data set we have built already and so we're getting our train data set right from here we've run this already we get back uh be careful we are not running this but we may make use of one or two methods from this so we have that and then we get back to this so here we have train data set we do some shuffling we specify the buffer size and then we also specify that we're going to reshuffle after each iteration we just copy this and paste this out here to have our train data set 2 now once we have this train data set 2 we now have our train let's call this mix data set or mixed data set okay we have our mixed data set and then we we'll make use of the zip method and with the zip we are going to pass in the train data set 1 and then the train data set two now if you could remember we had an error when we passed in two images which had two different shapes so we have to ensure that we do some pre-processing before doing the mix up so that said after doing the shuffling we could do the pre-processing so let's say pre-process let's get back up where we define this pre-processing and uh, we had here okay so we had at this level of data augmentation we had pre-processing although we had inserted this in our augment but it's practically this resize rescale method here so we could run this that would be fine and then we just do resize rescale so we wouldn't call that pre-processing again we just have resize rescale as we've done already we do the same mapping here we have resize and rescale okay so now we shuffle we resize and rescale and then we have our data which is now a combination of data set one and data set two this gif was gotten from giphy.com now we have this mixed data set formed we run the cell that's fine and then in here let's take this off we've run this already so we have that and then here we're gonna take in image one so image one and uh, level one level one we have that the the tuples we have image two and then level two let's close this up okay so we have that and then we get this from the train data set one data set one and the train data set two so that's how we get this we have image one level one image two level two the image one that we had here we don't need this again we have lambda 
uh, we get lambda we get the image we have the label and then we have our output so we return image and label so this is all about the mix up now we run the cell and then we create this other new cell yeah we have this error or uh, should have this and then we create this new cell right here then we paste this out from what we had done already and then here we have our mixed data set so we now have this mixed data set we shuffle again we do the mapping with the augment layer we do batching and prefetching but since our augment is no more the previous augment layer we had here we have now the mix up so here we replace that with mix up and that should be fine we have the train we could do the same for the validation we get an error or uh, spelling error train data set let's get back to this train data set okay so here we have the train data set we run that run this again we have here input y of more model operation has type in 64 that doesn't match the type flow 32 of argument x so this is where we multiplying the lambda by the levels so clearly we have the lambda which is a float and labels which are ints so here we're just gonna cast this so we have this casting we specify the d type float 32 that's fine and then right here we do the same casting specify the d type again and that's it let's run this again and see what we get you see it works fine we have this warnings also note that yeah we were trying to experiment and change this so let's get back to point two run that again okay so now we have our training data as you could see here we have the batch and then the image and then the batch and then the level so that's it we've now created this data set which happens to be a mixed data set then from here we are going to prepare our validation data set it's actually the same as what we had already so you could just simply run this previous cell right here this uh cell in this data loading just simply run this run this and it should be fine instead of doing this augment layer we, we meant to just do resize rescale we just have to resize and rescale our validation data we don't really need to shuffle we could take that off we could take the prefetching off and that's fine so we run our validation and then check it out here you see we have a validation data now the reason why we have this is because we run this twice so let's uh, reinitialize this right here uh, let's get back to the splits we create a train data and validation data okay let's run this again here now everything should be fine okay so you have that you have the batch dimension and that's good so we now get back to training and make sure everything is okay we rerun this and everything is now fine okay so we now set to train our model so we run our sequential api right here we run this we then compile our model and then we could get ready to train the model we have this poor results reason being that the mix up data augmentation strategy isn't adapted to the data set we're working with even if the mix up data augmentation strategy we've just applied wasn't very helpful for this particular problem it's important to note that this mix up strategy could be used in many other problems and with that we've come to the end of the section thank you for getting up to this point and see you next time